in 21st century we get to hear that there is one perfect Quran. It has been perfectly preserved to the letter, to the dot, to the word, to the sound. And today, if you want to put holes in the Quran, if you want to burn the Quran, you will have lots of, lots of troubles. But have you ever wondered how much fight, how much argument went through in the minds and lives of early Muslims soon after the death of Muhammad to give us this one perfect preserved Quran? Let's get to hear from Professor Yasin Dutton, where he is teaching Muslim missionaries, and some of them are from Speaker's Corner, or, uh, about how Uthman, how Uthman wanted to stop fitna, how Uthman was quite okay to burn the Quran, but above all, how Uthman was quite okay overrule the prophet of Islam. Let's hear the fights regarding the burning of the Quran. The question that comes up is whether the Othmani Mus'hafs, now there's, maybe I should just make a, a short detour here. The Prophet ﷺ transmitted the Quran obviously to the companions that were around him during the time that he was alive as Prophet. I say that because obviously in his early, before he was 40, there was no revelation. So there was nothing to transmit. But when he became Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and was given the uh, command from Sayyidina Jibreel, Iqra, from that time on, from that time on, we then have the existence of the Quran as we now know it. So for the 10, 11 years that the Prophet well, we should add Mecca, of course. So we, let, let's say 10 years Mecca, 10 years Medina, right? It's not accurate 100%, maybe 13 years altogether, 23 years. But let's go 10, 10, because it's convenient. So 10 years in Mecca, various surahs being revealed, and then 10 years in Medina. And then the whole dating, of course, is from the move from the Hijra. Therefore, we talk about the last 10, 11 years, meaning the time in Medina. And then the Prophet died. Tawfiyah. In around the year 11. Again, if I'm wrong by a year or two, please forgive me, but that's how I remember it as sort of somewhere ticking around. Sidna Uthman became caliph in, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, around the year 24, 25, the, the, I think on the, the, the cusp of the year, apparently it was at the very end of one year, the beginning of another, so um, not always quite so straightforward. But around the year 24, everything continued exactly the same until around the year 30. In the year 30 or thereabouts, a man called, is he, was he Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman or Again, I, I, it will be here. I can check it. I'll have to maybe pause and, and check. Um, Hudayfa or Hudayfa, I'm pretty sure Hudayfa, was fighting in the north of Iraq or Azerbaijan or somewhere like that. And he found the troops were arguing about the Quran. And he went back to wherever it was. I think he went back to Iraq, first of all, actually, where he came from. And then he went to Sidna Uthman in Medina, presumably. And he said to Sidna Uthman, radiallahu anhu, was the effect of stop this community from going down the same route that the Jews and the Christians went. Adrik is the word, Adrik hadi al-Ummah. So catch, catch hold of this Ummah before it starts going down the same, going, following the same path that the Jews and the Christians did with regard to their book, or their books. So see, Don Man says, what do you mean? He says, well, people are beginning to argue about the Quran, saying, I'm right, he's wrong, this is the correct way, and so on and so forth. 
So Sid Northman, of course, didn't want to just do anything straight away. So he sought the counsel of the companions at the time. And then they all, I mean, uh, uh, cutting a long story short, they all agreed that it was important to have one version, not as it were the version, but one version. And that is the beginning of the, what they call al-Mus'haf al-Uthmani, or al-Mus'ahif al-Uthmaniyya, because there were uh, more than one Mus'haf was sent to these different places. But effectively, even though we say there are uh, different Mus'hafs to different places, it's basically one skeleton that we're talking about, with very minor differences which we'll have a look at. So, so Seed Northman made that decision, and he also ordered that all other copies were to be burnt. So that means whatever was going on in that first 30 years was then changed, or it was restricted. And what was allowed was, in some instances, then not allowed. Now that brings up the question of, well, does that mean you've lost some Qur'an? What does that imply? Because that was, if you like, the question behind this question. Because if Sid Northman decided on one version, what about other possible versions? Does that mean one had lost something that the Prophet ﷺ said? These two companions, Sid Omar and uh, this man Hisham, they both had different versions of Surat al-Furqan. And yet both versions were given the stamp of authority of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, yes, unsida. like that it was sent down. So for the Prophet ﷺ, there was zero problem. Zero problem. Yep, that's fine. That's how it was. Yep, that's fine. That's how it was. Yep, it's all good. Recite whatever is easy for you. If you remembered it that way, and that's what you're familiar with, then you do that way. Don't, don't make it an issue. But then we start getting these arguments between the, the, uh, the, the troops, Azerbaijan, etc., as I just mentioned. And so then it was a different issue. In other words, now you're beginning to, there's discord among the Muslims. So instead of being one people who could use that version, could use that version, and it's all sort of possible, it's now being, becoming a cause of, of argument. And that's not good news. Becoming a, a source of fitna, trouble. So Sidna Omar got together a group of people to come up with a definitive text, we could say. Sidna Othman. Sidna Sorry, what did I say? Sidna Omar. Sidna Othman. So Sidna Othman got together a group of people, including Zaid ibn Thurbit and various other names. I don't know all the names. They're, they're well known for, you know, within the history books. And they, there's another part of the story. What did Sidna Othman use to make his definitive version? The answer that you'll find most commonly said, which is a simple answer, but it's also a little bit simplistic. As we'll see, it doesn't fill in all the gaps. The simple answer is that Sidna Abu Bakr had got together a version in his caliphate. Because people were being killed in the Battle of Yamama, the battle, I don't know what the battles were. There were battles um, uh, at the time of Sidna Abu Bakr. And so he got together a version. In other words, there were pages with this surah and pages of this surah and pages of this, and had them all together and then basically just kept them aside. When he died, they were left Again, excuse me if I'm wrong here, but I'm uh, in the hands of Hafsa. No. Yes, Hafsa, yes, but Hafsa's later. Hafsa's the daughter of, of Sina Omar. That's it, that's it. Sorry, now I got the link, yes. So Sina Abu Bakr had those pages. They were inherited by Omar, by Sina Omar. When Omar died, he handed them to his daughter Hafsa and basically said, look after them. And Hafsa did exactly that. She looked after them. Then, when this other thing turned up, 
this uh, dispute over various things in Azerbaijan, etc., among the troops, and they went to see North Man to uh, see about it. He said, yes, let's get the Ummah on one version of the, of the text. What version? Well, there's the one that Sidna Abu Bakr had that was inherited by Omar, which Hafsa's got. Go to Hafsa and ask her to give you that text. And Hafsa said, no, that's mine. I was given it. I'm not, I'm not going to let go of it for anybody. They said, well, if we promise to give it back, will that be all right? So she said, yes, that will be all right. So they used that as one of various options because there were also bits written on, as they say, shoulder blades on the, the bit of that palm tree that is quite flat uh, and in the hearts of men, etc. So all of these sources of the revelation were used to bring forward this one text, which happened. And so that's why it's known as the reading of Zayd sometimes, as we, in that hadith about Al-A'mash that we referred to. So it talks about the reading of Zayd, meaning the, the, the one that Sidna Othman did using Zayd. Zayd was the chief man of the... I hate using these words. The, 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 you can't, what can you say in good Arabic other than committee? Because committee is not good Arabic. Committee is bad French Revolution English. Um, anyway, a group of people a team, a team of people were got together to do this work of writing down the, 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 the Mus'haf. And then when they had finished, her pages were, uh, Hafsa's pages were given back to her. At the same time, Sidna Othman ordered that all other versions, existing versions, existing pages, etc. excuse me, were to be destroyed by burning or by washing away, if it's a question of the ink. So they use various words, harq, for burning. So some of the pages were burnt. And uh, I think mahu was one of the words that was used for sort of wiping off. Because if you write on parchment, you can scrape it off and reuse the parchment again a second time. Parchment's expensive, so you don't want to waste the material. So Maybe they did it that way. So you can either scrape off the old text or you can wash off the old text or you can burn the old text. You can do at least those three versions are mentioned. What did you do with Hafsas? Hafsa said, you're going to give, give me, I want my pages back. So he didn't burn Hafsa's pages. Othman passes away, another, there's a Sidna Ali, and then Sidna Ali passes away, and then there's Sidna Muawiyah, Sidna Muawiyah passes away, and, or was it Sidna Muawiyah? Yes. In the time of, no, I, I need, I need, oh, it's important, it's important. Trouble is, it's 60 pages, I won't know where to find it. The question is, when did Hafsa die? I don't know. But I think it was... I, Allahu A'lam. Because it was Marwan. Yes, it must have been the time of Muawiyah. Because Marwan was the governor of Medina under Muawiyah. So it's the time of Muawiyah. Now Muawiyah was the caliph between 40 and 60. Near enough maybe 61, I think 60, 40 and 60 of the Hijra. And Hafsa died I, from memory in the 50s, say like 57, 58 or something, I don't know. You can find out. And there were, these things are accessible in the books of history. So she had her pages. So Marwan was the governor. Now Marwan knew about the judgment of Sidna Othman and their kinsmen, of course, the Beni Umayyah as well. So when he knew that she died, he ordered those pages, he, what he, how can I say, ordered those pages to be brought to him and he burnt them. So Hafsa's pages were burnt at that page, at that time. 
So that version that Sidna Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr had, had uh, got collected, um, and then it did it, like it had been superseded by the Othmanic Mus'haf, the Othmanic recension. I, I'm using these words, but uh, um, take them in the Muslim meaning. Um, and he had ordered everything else to be destroyed. So in what's the, not in deference, because it's more than that, in obedience to that command, he, the governor of Medina at that time, when Hafsa died, said, we must burn these pages. If not, they will cause, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing here, but they, will, they are the cause of potential fitna in the future. Because if people see these and see that there's differences, they're going to say, whoa, no, no, you say one, one Quran, one this, one that, but there's multiple versions here. What are we going to trust? It'll cause fitna, which it does. It still does now, which is one of the benefits, hopefully, of what we're studying now, that we can uh, be armed against this fitna, because it's just fitna, just fitna. Amazing, isn't it? Of course, it is not my place to help a professor who is expert on Quranic materials and giving Quranic manuscripts and giving lecture on the preservation of the Quran. It is not my place to kind of just summarize what he actually meant. First Quran is compiled under the Abu Bakr after the death of Muhammad because people were dying in the battle of Yamama and Muslims were losing the Quran. They compiled whatever left over. That Quran was given to Umar. Umar passed it to his daughter Hafsa, and from Hafsa, around 650s, Uthman steps in. From the battle in Azerbaijan, people are calling one another kafir because the way Quran is being recited. People are calling one another disbelievers because of the way Quran is being recited. Chief comes to Uthman and then says, Oh, let's fix it before the, this nation divides like Jews, Jews and Christians about their book. Uthman gets the Quran from Hafsa. Remember, according to Professor, Hafsa didn't want to give it. Uthman promised her that he will return. And then Hafsa says, of course, I'll give it to you. And then her Quran is being returned and all of the Qurans are being burned being burned with the order of men called Uthman, who never received any revelation from Allah, who was just another father-in-law of Muhammad. And the reason these things are happening because different Qurans are causing fitna, different Qurans are causing corruption in the land. 533, what do you do if someone is causing corruption? They say goodbye to their hands and feet, and you crucify them. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And of course, Hafsa dies in 665. Soon after Hafsa dies, they take her Quran and then they burn her Quran as well. Because why? There are different Arabic Qurans. So you get rid of everything, you preserve only one version of the Quran. Why? Because different Arabic Qurans are causing fitna. It is the source of the fitna. It is causing corruption. And the answers we have actually doesn't fill the gaps. But what we do is we follow the examples of Uthman who ordered burning of the Qurans. Disappointing, very much disappointing. Quran has been destroyed by the third caliph of Islam. He thought it was all right to destroy the Quran, get rid of the differences, different versions. Doesn't look like he was very successful since today there are more than one perfect preserved Quran. Since today, there is more than one Quran has different names, different words in it, and none of them are being seen 
by the Prophet of Islam or God of Islam. Don't be surprised if Muslims are dis if Muslims are disappointed that you put holes in the Quran. If Muslims are disappointed that you are burning the Quran, I think main reason is because they know they cannot do anything to Uthman. Therefore, what they do is Uthman couldn't do his job well. Uthman, what he took over from his previous caliphs, from Umar, from Abu Bakr, as well as from Muhammad, become the source of fitna with giving the different versions of the Quran to the, this world. And Muslims cannot do anything to him because he's long dead. What they would do is they would simply use the as the source of fitna with knowing actually it is the tradition of Islam. It is their own caliphs. It is their own prophet. It is their own angels. It is their own God who causes the fitna by giving different versions which causes disturbing in Muslim community where people calls one another kafir. And today we heard from Professor Yasin Dutton. Today is the same. There are different versions of the Arabic Quran. What do we do is we equip ourselves for that. What is the best way to equip ourselves for the different versions of the Arabic Qurans? We deny. There is only one Quran perfectly preserved, dot by dot, letter by letter, sound by sound, word by word. It's been burned, destroyed, because it was causing fitna. Uthman was quite okay to overlook the decisions his own prophet did. Welcome to the world of Islam. Welcome to the world of Islam.